Hello everybody, welcome back to your weekday weekend. Thank you so much for being here. Wow. Thank you guys so much for all the love for my CAD software video and for my Bamboo P1P video. I can't believe it. I've been trying to respond to every single comment. So um, if you've commented, thank you so much. So I'm recording this part after the fact. Um, it's probably going to be kind of loud because the P1P is going in the back. But um, I just wanted to make a point that in my last CAD video about Libre, I mentioned they had really good pricing and all that kind of stuff. I had no idea that in other countries, um, there's not actually prices listed. They direct to uh, resellers who don't, I guess, have prices listed. I'm super sorry about that. I had no idea that that was the case. Um, hopefully Libre has a solution for that in the future. I would suggest if you're really interested in Libre, I would suggest uh, contacting them. Perhaps they have a solution. They do seem like a really small company. Um, so I would expect that maybe there's some legal issues keeping them from selling directly to other countries. I'm not quite sure. Again, they're pro they seem like a pretty small country. So maybe there's some kind of legal issue getting in the way for them to sell to other countries. So um, hopefully that's the case. I know that they aren't purposely trying to keep you guys from being able to buy their software because... Why would they try to keep someone from buying software? So, anyway, sorry about that, guys. I really hope that problem gets fixed in the future. Here's the rest of the video. Today, I guess the CAD software thing is taken off, so I guess we're doing a CAD tutorial, I guess. By no means am I an expert, but I, I love sharing what I know. Um, maybe someone out there is a beginner, and, you know, I can, I can help you a little bit. Um, I would say I'm somewhere between beginner and intermediate. So, anyway... Um, the other night, last night, I designed this. It is supposed to be an ice scraper uh, for the printables ice scraper competition. Um, is it the best design? I don't think so. Um, is an ice scraper really going to hold up being made out of 3D printed plastic? I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Um, however... Um, I designed it in what I think is probably not the most efficient way to design it. So if you look over here, I actually uh, designed it from the bottom upward. And a lot of you are going, ugh. Well, I knew I wanted this part, and then from there I worked my way up. I had this, and I revolved a circle for the hand, the finger cut out. And then I, I made a hole in the center, and I added the fillets. But we can do better. Um, some of you might already be knowing what I'm going to do. Um, we're actually just going to take this design, and we're going to design the same thing a different way. One of my favorite things about CAD is how you can reach the same end goal with a different journey. Um, it's the same reason I like Photoshop so much. With that in mind... We're going to put this off to the side and open up a new document. All right, we're in a new document here in Alibre. Um, I'm not going to say my keyboard commands because I've changed them from the defaults. We're going to activate a sketch, click on XY plane. I'm going to center myself to the plane. Um, I'm sorry, I'm already, I'm already screwing up. And right, I'm going to show my planes. Um, I believe I want the XZ plane this time. Normally I sketch from bottom up, as you can tell by my old design. But today we're literally just going to make the whole thing from one sketch. So XZ plane today, we're going to do it from the side. Um, we're literally just going to make one big sketch and revolve it around itself. I'm going to look at this old sketch here. And see how, what's the 55 at the radius of that center hole, okay. So, 27 and a half radius, 55 diameter, 27 and a half radius, okay. And then, how big is this? 175 from the center. Oh, geez, okay. So I'm going to actually use, just because I'm creating off this other sketch, I'm going to use two dimensions to get this line right. Normally, you'd probably just do one, and I could do the math and get one, um, but we're going to use two. 
So 27 and a half there. And then um that's 175. Eighty seven point five. Cool. Um, of course, I need to horizontal that. I'm sorry. Um, and that. There we go. Cool, now that's constrained. Um, really, I should have drawn the whole thing before I started working on even one bit, but eh, whatever. Okay. Uh, I made a whole new plane, which it looks like is about a centimeter. Is that a centimeter up? Yes, it is. Okay. So... Uh, oh, that and that. Give me 10. Cool. And then I want vertical constraint, that and that. Cool. Again, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. I'm a beginner. I'm constraining as I go. I know a lot of people just draw the general shape and then go from there. But, um... I'm just going to constrain as I go today, because that's how I want to do it, I guess. Um, 32 millimeters tall, but I'm looking at the other sketch here. Okay. Seventeen. Hang on. Hang on. Thirty-two millimeters tall, but fifteen from the top of it. There's a fifteen radius circle. Okay. Twenty two and a half. Oopsie. And then arc. Oopsie. I need a construction line, probably. It might make things a little easier. And then arc. There we go, and then another line. Cool. All right. And then... Uh, oh, that's 15 diameter. Oopsie. So 7.5 radius. There we go. Again, uh, arcs are by their radius. Full circles, which is what I drew over there, is by the diameter. Oopsie. Okay. Much better. That's not what I want. Uh, uh, that's 32. That's what I want. Okay. Still a beginner, guys. Still a beginner. Okay, from here. Uh, actually, I technically need to add on here. Um, that's not supposed to be vertical. This second one is 75. Oh, so I need to delete 
that constraint. I actually don't know how to delete a constraint in Libre. There we go. Hover your mouse over it and press delete. There we go. I figured I'd figure it out. Okay. Boink, boink. And then 37.5. Oh god. Why did it do what? Okay. Oh. I did it from that point, not from this line. That's what it is. Okay. Now, cool, that's correct. That was my problem. Now, 37.5. There we go. That is correct. Now, finally, we can make a line that is like that. All right. Now, finally, deactivate sketch. Uh, revolve around the z-axis, and there we go. There's our part, and then we literally just need a fillet, basically everywhere, because I do like me some fillets. And there we go. There's the same part. So. Sorry, you guys, you had to see my struggling, um, but, you know, the learning process is fun, and I got there in the end. Um, looks like my fillets are a little bit bigger in the other one. I do 1.5. 2. Looks like I did 2. But, yeah, now we have identical parts. Identical parts. Uh, yeah, so that was fun. Um, identical parts in one sketch rather than five sketches. Um, you know, either way has its pluses and minuses. This one took me a lot longer to constrain, but it is just one revolved sketch. Whereas the other one has a lot more numbers that I had to go back and find and math that I had to do to arrive for this one. But, um, yeah, we got the same part. So let's go ahead and send it to the printer and see how it does. And here it is. Um, purple PLA from Overture. Um, it printed in about, I don't know, two and a half something hours. My cat's trying to get up here. Um, there he is. Um, anyway, I'm sure this won't immediately break when you try to use it on ice. Um, feels fairly sturdy, but the edges are a little, I don't know. So, anyway, it's all for a bit of fun, huh? So, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, appreciate you being here. I'll see you next time, next weekend. Bye.